He's America working God. He's America working God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is America working God. Um, if anybody is following along today, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 1 John chapters 4 and 5. We're going to be talking a little bit about the fruit of love. Anyway, real quick, as we get started, Father God, I ask, Lord, that you keep your hands upon us, Lord, that you speak to us, speak through us, minister to us, Father God, Lord, and just bless the people that need this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, with that being said, if you're on the line, please like and subscribe, help us share, give me a victory in Jesus. You know, the only way to get peace is through victory. victory. The only victory we truly have is in Jesus. Amen. So, we're going to talk a little bit. The fruit of the Spirit. Notice, one fruit, many symptoms. So, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits that should shine in your life. When you have the Spirit of God within you. Amen. And you know, the Bible says that the Spirit of God being within you is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. <laughs> so, if you've accepted what Jesus has done for you on the cross, and you've truly allowed that repentance in your life, that change, then you're going to have these fruits become manifest, evident in your life. So let's, let's look at the first fruit symptom the first symptom of the fruit of the spirit love we're not talking about physical love or erotic love or love of brotherly love like phileo love but we're talking about god's love agape love mm -hmm. today we'll be looking at first corinthians chapter 13 as i said a minute ago and 1 John 4 and 5, Mark Twain once said, after spending time with good people, I can see why Jesus spent time with sinners and tax collectors. <laughs> you know, all too often in the churches, people who find Christ, who claim to be Christian, they become grumpy people. And you have to walk this way, and you have to do this, and you have to do that. They, they smother that spirit of love, and, and, and that, that, hey, you know, encouragement. Yeah. Not everybody that is a Christian does, but there's a lot of people walking around claiming to be Christian that treat people worse than enemies. And I think that's kind of what Mark Twain was getting at, because... As a Christian myself, my wife and I took my family when we were younger. We'd go visit churches because we had evening church services where I was preaching. So we'd go visit different churches in the morning. One church we went to three times. Wow. Three times. And we sat down at the same place every time. And by the second week, they're looking like, hey, you can't sit here. That's like Betty Jo and, and Jim Bob's spot. Well, where are they at? Where are they? Well, look, I don't want to cause any problems, so we moved to a different spot. Oh, you can't sit there either. Why? Because that's Jack and Jill's spot. Yeah. I, of course, I'm using fake names. Yeah. I don't even remember the names of the people that they told us. All right. But we didn't feel welcome. Uh -huh. We're new you? people here. These seats don't have names on them. Why can't we sit here? Right. That's not how we're called to be as Christians. We as Christians are called to love even our enemies and to pray for them. Mm. But all too often, love is a choice that we forget to make. Mm. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting at verse 1 through 7. Okay. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal and if I have pathetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have faith 
so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give it all away and am delivered my body up to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Understand, these are all things people do and things that a lot of people do that, that people get lifted up for. People that have great talents and good works and, and hey, look at how self-sacrificing they are. They're doing all this good stuff to help people. But it says if you do all this and you have not love, you're wasting your time. Mm. You're not doing anybody any good. You might be able to toot your own horn, but in God's eyes, you're wasting your time. So then it explains to us a little bit about what, what love is. Verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Mm. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Mm. I'm going on to verse 8, by the way. I said 7, but I'm going to okay. keep going. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been known. That one means a lot to me. Mm. That means someday our questions when we're in heaven, we're gonna know it. We're not gonna have to ask it. God's gonna allow us to know it. Yeah, buddy. It says, so faith, hope and love abide these three but the greatest of these are love mm, is love. love is important love is important to have in your life love hopes all things bears all things endures all things Amen. love is patient love's not arrogant and haughty mm. this kind of love is a love that takes a lifetime to craft as we look at the way of love, we need to remember that love is not a feeling, even though feelings may be involved, but love is a choice that we put into action as God did in John 3, 16. Think about it. For God so loved the world. How much did he love the world? So much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. God loved how much? So much that he gave. It was a choice. God didn't have to, but he did it out of love. Yes. We, in the same way, can put our love into action. A choice we learn to make as we follow God daily. As we choose to take up our cross and follow God daily. We will spend a lifetime learning to grow in love. Mm -hmm. This description of love in 1 Corinthians 13, that is a perfect love that we will spend our lifetime trying to achieve. We won't until we are known, as we, until we know as we are known, until we die, until we're in heaven. We won't have that down perfect. But it's something that we're to move towards daily, to grow, to mm -hmm. seek. Seek God in love. And that is important because the Bible says that God is love. That's why I want to read John. You said 1 John? 1 John. Thank you, actually. I was going to forget the first. 1 John, starting at chapter 4, verse 7. Uh -huh. See, that's why I said 7 earlier for 1 Corinthians. <laughs> okay. God is love. 
Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And in this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him in this love. Not that we have loved God, but that God loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Praise God. Propitiation. You know, that means that, that He was the only thing that could make us right with God. One and only. The only. There's no other way. Mm. Beloved, if God so loved us, mm. we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us. Mm. Because He has given us of His Spirit. That's why I was talking about the fruits of the Spirit. And what's the first symptom of the, of the, of the Spirit? Love. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Mm. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him. And He in God. Amen. Stop and think about that for a second. How do you know you have the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. It says it right here. It's not, hey, I got prayed over and I speak in tongues. Not everybody has that gift. But if you've accepted what Jesus has done and you believe in Him, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. Amen. It says right here, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him. Amen. How is God in you? It's through the Holy Spirit. And I get to speak in tongues. It's through the Holy Spirit. How do you know if you have the Holy Spirit? Have you confessed that Jesus is the Son of God? That's what the Bible says, whoever confesses. Amen. So we have come to know and to believe that the love of God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God in him. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is so also are we in this world therefore or sorry there is no fear for love but perfect love casts out all fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfected in love as a Christian, what's our punishment? It was paid for by Jesus. Yeah. We are guilty, but forgiven. Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We've been forgiven. We've been forgiven. We have no reason to fear eternal hell and punishment. We will be judged but on the basis of what we've done with what God has given us. Mm. Have we shined as a Christian? Have we gone out and shared God's truth? Have we truly been in a relationship with God and seeked Him daily? If you haven't, then you got something to fear. Mm. But if you truly know God, if you've truly been forgiven, you have nothing to fear. I stand when I get into fearful situations. I've done it on the freeway at nighttime with oil spraying all over my tire, going 70 miles an hour trying to keep up with a club years ago. Wow. Coming around corners, feel my bike sliding. Mm -hmm. All right, Lord, fear not, for I'm with thee. Be not dismayed. I am the Lord thy God. I will uphold thee with thy right. Isaiah 41.10. 
Trust God. Amen. Know He's with you. Don't put yourself in those situations where you got tires, oil spraying on your tire and you're still trying to go around a corner. 70 miles an hour. No. Um, use a little bit of wisdom. <laughs> I was in my 20s, okay? So, um, we love because he first loved us. Amen. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he had seen, cannot love God. Whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever God's love, whoever God loves, I'll get it right. Everybody. I got it wrong. Whoever loves God must also love his brothers. Yes. How can you love God if you can't love your brothers? Mm -hmm. God loves us when we don't deserve it, right? Right. So we need to quit looking for reasons for our brothers to deserve love and show them the love of God, even though they don't deserve it. Another step the Bible says is that you must love yourself. Yes. God's going to start these changes from within. Quit holding pain and hate to yourself for what you've done, for how you feel you might have messed up your past. Understand that God's forgiven you for that past. It's okay to forgive yourself. I've been redeemed. That's right. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Only by Jesus. First John 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we are children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God, that whoever keeps His commandments and His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Amen. Our faith, who is who, who it is that overcomes the world, except the one who believes in the Son of Jesus. How do we know if we've overcome the world? It's the one that believes in Jesus. Son of God? Sure you see, God. it says, it says that God's commandments are not burdensome. I love this because, you know, if you look at the 613 commands in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. the 613 commands in this Bible, I couldn't hold them. Second, you tell me to kill an animal, I'm going to be like, it didn't do nothing to me. Right. You know, I couldn't hold them. But this law is designed so that without God, without Christ, you fail. Jesus said, you can roll all them commands up into these two. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. You need to start making that choice to love, to let the love of God shine from within you. God made that choice to love you when you didn't deserve it. Mm. Now we need to go out into the world and love as he did, to share his love, to show his love. You may be the only one in this world that can stand up and tell somebody that Jesus loves them, that he is the only way to heaven and that he paid for their sins. Mm. If you do that, you're loving somebody. If you're biting your tongue and affirming somebody's sin, you're not loving them. You're not loving them. You're patting their back as they head to hell. Mm -hmm. That's not the walk of a Christian. We're to tell people, hey, look, yeah, you're doing this sin. You might be proud of it, but God's not. But he loves you anyway. Love you anyway. And he's made a path of forgiveness for you. And all you got to do is believe. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, and that includes you, mm. 
should not perish but have everlasting life. You might say, but it's too late for me and I can't forgive myself. 317 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come here to kick you and put you down and tell you you're not good enough. Because to be honest with you, none of us are. But it said that the world through him might be saved. Start a relationship with Jesus today. Makes an eternity a difference. Be blessed.